Actors has a lot of great content here for you guys to watch. So I hope you watch that as well. We've got Sharing Our Culture. We've got uh, Pocket Universe, uh, The Fog, Scoff Off, The Growlers will be back in the fall, uh, The Newfoundland Lobbyists. There are a lot of good shows. Now, I don't know if they're sticking around for the summer. Listen, I'm not in the boardroom meetings, but I'd like to think that if they're not back on in the summer, you can catch them in the fall. We'll see how that all goes. Uh, I would like to be back on the fall. Hopefully, hopefully things work out. And I mean, usually what we'd like to do here is we used to give, or I, we, we like to give, there you go. We like to give this opportunity to show, you know, athletes, entertainers, and that's usually the episodes, right? I think that's right. I, I'm talking to you as if you're going to actually answer me. But I figured for the last episode for now, I wanted to give a different kind of perspective, a different light. I myself am a person with a disability. It's not a visible disability. Uh, but growing up, there was no real children's books really discussing that disability. You know, like they create a character and then they talk about like things that you need to learn, like learning to share, learning to give, learning to be thankful, all that stuff. But diversity was never really talked about. So this person that I have on right now, I actually know her as the Yellow Power Ranger first. But, you know, we all grow up. We all have different interests. And she has a book out now called Everyone Has a Belly Button, which kind of discusses the diversity and, you know, being unique, but accepting people for, you know, who they are. And yes, we're different, but we're also the same. Uh, so this week for our last episode here on Rogers for now, we've got... Serena Vincent. And like I said, you might remember her as the Yellow Power Ranger, but that's how I remember her. But it's really cool that she came out with a book as well. And I think it's a great conversation. Hopefully you do as well. And uh, oh, right. The other thing I was going to mention very briefly. So some people have asked, who is Byron Tobin? That is a good question. I don't know what Rogers is trying to do to me. Like I thought I thought I was doing good. But I guess next season, if we're back on, they have a guy named Byron Tobin that's going to take over for me. I hope he's witty. I hope he's charming. I hope that he likes wearing sweaters because that's kind of my thing. I like sweaters. And, uh, you know, good luck, Byron, wherever you are out there, wherever you are. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, it's probably just a glitch in the system or in the TV. It'll be fixed, hopefully, if we come back for the fall. But anyway, if we do or if we don't, the big thing to take away here is they gave us an opportunity. And that's all I ever ask of people is to give someone like myself or anyone an opportunity to shine, to kind of show what they are capable of. And for that, I'm always thankful that Rogers gave us that opportunity. So without further ado, because I know you're sick of hearing from me do a monologue, uh, throw it to the episode. Play that intro music. God, cut me off. Welcome to yet another episode of Toba Tonight. We're here with Serena Vincent. Serena, my very first question for you is, what is your favorite color? Oh, well, I have to say yellow. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> for people out there who like know who this person is, <laughs> and maybe, you, maybe you're like, oh, why did he ask that question right off the hop? It's a little bit of an Easter egg because we are speaking to the yellow Power Ranger or one of many yellow Power Rangers, we should say. One of a handful of Yellow Power Rangers. I yeah. was Yellow Power Ranger on Power Rangers Lost Galaxy in 1999 in the 90s, people. Yeah, that so, is my um, favorite time. <laughs> but to answer you honestly, I mean, I do love yellow because it's happy and cheerful and bright and sunny and all the things. But my favorite color is, I have two, white and purple. White and purple. Okay, explain that. Why white and purple? I don't know. White just, I love all white, all white. I have a child now, so it doesn't really work anymore. But before <laughs> a child, just white linens, white everything, white curtains. It just feels so like clean and fresh. And, and um, maybe it's because the life of an actor is kind of chaotic. Like okay. it, we're just so many words in our head all the time and wearing so many different hats. And I don't know why, but, and then purple is divine. Uh, I want to ask you kind of 
to get yeah. really into the chat here is now there's a lot that we're going to cover. There's a lot that we're going to go all over the place with, but let's talk about obviously the book first. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone has a belly button. Uh, Everybody I wanna... has a belly button. <laughs> I have a copy right here. I want to ask you what, because yeah. I know there's like a lot of topics. Like it's kind of interesting to me because when I was a child and people are like, you still are, that's fine. Uh, but <laughs> when, when, uh, when, when I was growing up, there was like these different books had different messages, but like as a kid, as a child, you don't really, I guess, grasp it until you're older. Like there was this book that was um, like, I will love you forever. Now I only know this because of the friends reference and Joey keeps on saying that's his favorite book, but I remember reading it as a child, but like as a child, you're kind of like, all right, mom, you like this book. But then when you get older, you're like, Oh, I understand it now yeah. a little bit more now obviously i guess what you're implementing this book is obviously you're talking about a little bit about racial equality or racial equality uh you know about skin color and telling everyone like you know it don't really matter what your skin color is we all got something essentially that we can be uh proud of or you know makes us who we are but like i'm wondering how do you get that across in this book i know it's like I feel like that's a difficult question, but no, it's not. I feel like you can answer this. Yeah, I can answer this. So um, it's a great question. Well, first of all, I'm pointing out pointing out that the differences, but also you know, but but also our similarities. Like we, like we are all the same, right? But but our differences do matter, and I think that's like that that's a bigger conversation about systemic racism and and people that say that they're colorblind and all of that. I feel like I've learned a lot since 2020 and how I can be a better white person and understand what's really going on. Um, but to answer your question about um, everybody has a belly button, I, um, I wrote this book the day George Floyd was murdered. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was at that, um, at that time when I, you know, we were watching the horror happen on the news uh, my child was then, my son was 14 months old and he was in his high chair and I was feeding him, you know, lunch or whatever. And it was the time when I was teaching him where his body parts are. You point to your nose, you say, this is your nose, say nose, belly button, eyes, toes. So you're going through their whole body. It's one of the first things you teach them, like their awareness of their bodies and themselves and, and where everything is. And, and um, so I was in that phase and of doing that. It's like what I was doing in that moment. And I was watching this horror go down on television. This is not horror. It's I've done a lot of horror. That's another part yeah. topic of the podcast. Um, yeah. Maybe um, this this reality, uh, this this devastating reality. And I thought, holy crap! What am I doing right now to teach my kid about skin color, equality, diversity, races? What am I, racism? What am I doing right now? And at that point, I, I had, was doing nothing, right? I, um, and I thought, well, what if we teach our kids about talk? What if we start the conversation about our differences and our similarities right now, right when you're talking them about their bodies? I also read that book um, from Ta-Nehisi Coates, and he talks a lot about like the black body. And, and, and so here, here I am teaching my kid about his little body and I thought well what if I did it what if I did this and I just made up this little poem I was like everybody has a belly button everybody has a nose everybody has a mouth everybody has toes everybody has skin so my black and or brown um um you know I went on through the through the the, the the rhyme and he loved it and I and I was explaining it to him and pointing to different colors in the house and blah 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 I put him down for a nap and then I wrote the book and it came out this I, I love writing in poetry um and it was this really beautiful poem. And I just started saying it to him and he loved it. He would say, mo, 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 mo belly button. Yeah. And anyway, I, um, uh, and so here we are today and now it's a book and we have an incredible artist and I want to talk about her, but that, that's sort of that, that's long winded answer, but that's how I decided to do it is, is start the conversation just as we start the conversation about, about your, your own baby's little body. Yeah. It's, it's like a tough kind of, wheel to spin i guess at times because you're like you're looking at it from uh, different perspectives and like yeah there there are people that can do that and then there's people that really can't it's like a line and then it, it, you either cross the line if you if you do or you don't like i know not necessarily related to the children's side of things but just with the disability mm -hmm. i know with like um 
I think it's mostly Canada, maybe the US as well. But like for someone like myself to try to find media jobs, you know, like you, you, as a kid, you're looking up to somebody for mm -hmm. what you want to do in life. And for me, I wanted to be in media, but I never had someone to really look up to. Like now I have like an invisible disability, so it's kind of hard to tell. But like for someone in a wheelchair, there is no some, there's no one here, let's say on CTV or CBC or NBC that you're like, I see that person doing it. Now I want to do it. Mm -hmm. You're, you're kind of going to be the yeah, first. Yeah. And it's sad because even to this day, you would be the first and someone is taking a chance on you. But I feel like, you know, this generation, the kids that are coming up next with your books, with other books that kind of discuss all this, they might not feel like they'll go when they get older and be like, yeah, I read that book when I was younger. And they'll tell you their own story of like how it helped them get through something or how like that made them be inspired to do this. Like, I feel like our generation didn't really have that. Um, we didn't, yeah. We did, but like, because we understood that now, we're kind of like, oh, right, well, we don't want the next generation to be like, like that. I feel like writing something like this for children, it's kind of letting them know, like, you know, you're giving the check mark to them as saying like, you know, it's okay to be a rainbow. It's okay to be unique. Like, just because you don't see that in someone else doesn't mean that you got to cross yourself out and saying, well, all right, well, I don't meet what they're meeting. So yeah. there goes, there goes my color of my rainbow. <laughs> I'll have to show you right here. You know, I like, I would literally try to include everything and everybody only so much you can do in like a kid's book, but I have, we have a page here about everybody has a birthmark. Nice. And, and, now I feel uh, included. <laughs> and yeah, um, because I think that, you know, that everybody does, some people have small birthmarks, somebody has big, big birthmarks. And that's a thing that like kids, other kids can be cruel about, right? Oh, ab absolutely. And, um, and so I thought that was important to, um, to point out. And also like all birthmarks are different, yet they're all the same, you know? Yeah. And um, just, again, it's like this book is a conversation starter about all of these things. If parents aren't talking about them, like our kids, our babies are sponges and they learn so much. And yeah. if they can learn nose, mouth, eyes, toes, hair, they, they learn how to do all the things. Why can't in this moment also in those very first few months also learn about the differences in our skin color and. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting because, you know, there's going to be and this is where it kind of comes into the contrast side, because, you know, there are going to be people like I, I'm hoping not. But there always there always is, even if it's a small amount of people that will come out and say, like, let them be like they're four, they're five, they're three. Like, why are you teaching this to them at a young age? Like, just let them kind of learn it over time. Well, I'm like, that's kind of yeah, there's aspects to that. But like, I look at it and um, I know John Oliver had a book about a bunny, but it was a gay bunny. And people were kind of like, uh, is this like for adults? Is this a kid's book? And he was like, no, it's a kid's book to teach your kids that like, you know, men can like awesome. men, women can women. And people were like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. It's like, all right, well, that's fine, I guess, for you. But, you know, maybe. Yeah, well, just... the kids that are gay. That's, yeah, that, that's exactly. That makes them feel so good. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's kind done research on this. Like, I don't know the research, but like I've read somewhere. <laughs> that they did research on kids and like preschool age kids and kindergarten age kids and like by not doing anything kids will grow up with a certain level of racism because yeah. they only see certain things in movies certain things in books certain things in toys certain things at home hearing their you know uh you know conversations um so i, th I think it is important to have all these um all these conversations and and um and we are right like yeah. we we are i mean there's some I don't know when this is going to air, but all this stuff with just came out about Texas, right? And in and, and the U.S. about, um, uh, you know, them investigating homes with trans kids, which is just sick. Yeah. And um, and so we need more people talking about the truth and what's real and protecting our children. When you look at bigger picture now, because I know we're, we're going to try to branch off the kind of the, the racism, whatever, like this topic. But I do I do find it interesting. But like when you look back at your career now and you see kind of where it's kind of changed, do you look back now and you're like, I'm grateful that all this happened and now that I can make my own kind of landmark with this? Because I feel like if you were born in a different time frame, these things might have been a lot more difficult to kind of land. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, I just like don't really believe in regret. You know, I, I, oh, I, I do. No, I'm like, <laughs> I feel so grateful for life in this life. I feel so blessed that I have figured out a way to carve out a path in this business and a career for myself. Like when I, I would watch, I watched all the same shows. I would watch Family Matters and I'd watch Full House and Family Ties and different strokes. And I just, I wanted to be on TV, but I didn't know how, yeah. how to do that. Like, how do you get from your tiny, like, lower middle class home in front of the TV to on TV. Like how, did, how does that happen? Yeah. You know? And I didn't know. How do you go to Las Vegas to Los Angeles? Yeah. How do you go? Yeah. What's interesting is that you brought up Miss Nevada teen is because it was sort of a segue for me. It was sort of a segue. I wanted to enter that pageant and my mom, parents said, no, they went out of town. I raised the money <laughs> myself and I bought a dress. I entered it and I won. <laughs> they were like, it's rigged. Anyway, I won. I had never like done anything like that before. So then I had to go to Miss Teen USA, which is essentially like shooting a reality show. You all 51 of us go and, um, um, and, um, live together to shoot the televised episode of the pageant. Okay. What's interesting is circling back to like, to race is I believe the year before me, I, I, I could totally be wrong. And if there's a pageant expert out there, I'm sorry, and I'm willing to be wrong. But I believe the year before me, there were like zero black girls that, that made it into the top 10. Zero. Oh, wow. So my year, I think they were trying to be more inclusive and which was great, obviously. And um, I don't know. I, 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 a handful, it was, it was split down the middle, right? Maybe not down the middle, definitely more white girls, than black girls, but yeah. there were, there were, you know, more, it was more diverse. Oh my God. I, I saw up close. I lived with these girls, how racist some of these 16 year olds and 17 year olds were. I find like I'm 30 odd, but like I always thought like, and I guess when you're younger, sometimes you have like these goals. And like, I, I think when I look back at my goals, I'm like, you know what? It's reasonable, but I'm also like, I also have to kind of calm myself down and be like, you know what? Once in a lifetime that might happen. But I remember being like 16 in high school and telling people I want to be on SNL. Don't know how to get to SNL, but I want to be on SNL. I remember telling people I wanted to have a talk show and then not remembering yeah. how to get yeah, like, but, not, but like not remember. Yeah, I have a talk show. I want to be on SNL too. Can we yeah. be on SNL together? <laughs> yeah, let's let's ask. Uh, let's go like ask some people. I don't know who's even on anymore, but let's go yeah, ask them and be like. Um, but... but I I hear what you're saying, and that yeah. is. Um, but this is my answer. As an actor, I live off of hope. Yeah. Like I don't know what the next job is. I audition so effing much every single week i re rememorize so many pages of material and i fall in love with all these characters and i am i'm like oh my god if i book this show holy shit that's gonna change my life yeah. oh wow honey if i get this movie i'm gonna be going here this month instead oh no didn't get that one okay yeah. all right this one i'm gonna be here blah, blah, blah. oh we'll move to hawaii blah, 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 blah. Oh, and then they know none of them happen right because yeah it's, because you this is the part of the business as an actor that nobody knows they don't you don't know all the things that we read for that we don't get so yeah. i live off of hope and if i stop hoping i'll die do you know That's, what i mean like if i like the, oh, the absolutely. If i stop hoping that like one of those big next things can happen is the day i can't be i can't be in this business so yeah. i i have high expectations i'm an overachiever and i believe i can do it all <laughs> Yeah, I do. Of course, I have this like insecure voice in me that's like, no, you can't. You suck. You know, like I think everybody has that. But that's um, my parents. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> but you know, when you're tired and all the things, you're just like, no, I can't. You know, and then you get a good night's sleep, and they're like, no, yes, I can. I can. I can. I can do this. So I have really like high hopes, and I thought I would be. I thought I thought I would have done many, many more things in my career by now. But then I look at my career and I think, wow, well, what I have done, like I, I did it, yeah, all of it, just me, you know, <laughs> I mean, it takes a village, but like, um, it, it, it really takes that hope 
and it takes you getting up every day and 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 not giving up. I, I want to yeah. ask you because I I like to talk to our ex or people that we have on about social media and like their perspective or perspective or how they view social media because like we live in a world now where I find it's about likes comments like you know that necessarily it's not really much about content but now you have a pretty good following on both your facebook twitter instagram but like do you worry about that or are you just more or less saying like if i post this and like five people like it that's great if no one likes it i'm posting it because the reason i bring this back is ed sheeran made a comment not that long ago where it's like when he sees people posting selfies and they don't get like 20,000 likes they get deflated but he's like Instagram and that's supposed to be a promotional tool so I'm like I get what he's going for because I guess for me I grew up in like the MSN age where I log into MSN if someone's like you're an idiot it's blocked that's it done right but now today it's like 20 odd people that are strangers can come on and be like this podcast sucks you suck blah 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 and I'm just kind of like whoa like it's a wave, but I also have to remember that because I grew up in the age of social media, that just kind of comes off your back. Like, yeah, there are a few comments that you're like, Ooh, that hurt, but mm -hmm. I'm over it. But you have kids today on TikTok that are like 10 and some random person yeah. will say, you suck at dancing. I'm probably one of them. No. <laughs> and uh, then it's like that deflates them for their whole life. And I'm like, dude, it's one person doesn't know you. You're never going to meet them. Just continue on with what you're doing. But like, how do you view your social media? Like when you, do you get hate mail and then go like, oh, I can deal with it. Or you kind of like, why did you say that to me today? So it's such a good, good question. And I'm just going to be totally honest. Well, I feel like it's a necessary evil, like social media. Yeah. I think it can do a lot of good. Um, but I also think it's a huge waste of time. Yeah. I, I'm so aware of like just this of like the scroll and like looking through your phone. I'm so aware of, of how often we're doing that and all day long. And I'm extra aware of it because my kid is like, what, hello, what are you looking at? You know, I want to see, yeah. and like, we're missing life, right? We're missing like actual life, but this is, but it's a necessary, it's a tool now in our business. Yeah. And like, it does matter. And it, and it does matter for actors of, of sort of like my caliber i guess like i'm not an a-list actress i'm a working actor that like has a fan base and has a following but um i don't know where my where my next job is right yeah. so I, I i'm definitely like i i need to be in the game and so i would be lying if i said if i post something well for example if i post a sexy sexy picture it'll get ten thousand likes yeah if I post a picture of my book, it'll get 300. Yeah. But that's also because of the algorithm, right? It's like, there's this like algorithm. And like, if I post a sexy picture, the, the algorithm knows all of my followers that like those kinds of pictures and it sends my picture to their phone. They're not okay. seeing my book. They're not looking at my book. If nobody knows this, you should know this. But if yeah. they're not looking at my book and thinking, I'm not going to like that picture. They're, no, yeah. they don't even get to see it. Oh, and interesting. And that is where, um, did you watch that documentary, The Social, is it called The Social Dilemma? I think that's what it's called. Oh, watch no, it. I've never heard of that. Oh my God, you have to watch it. It'll change your life because this is an algorithm and like, and, and it'll change the way you look at social media. It won't change your life. Um, <laughs> but um, so now I'm like, when, I, when I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. It is a bummer that my yeah. book picture only gets 300 likes. Why? I want people to buy my freaking book. Why? Because I want to help like raise a generation of kids that aren't racist. Yeah. So, um, but it's like, I have to take a sexy picture with my book and then maybe yeah. like it'll get it's, people. Yeah. It's Does just, that make sense? you're yeah. not going to see people post their lows on social media. That's not what it's for. It's like, if someone, it's funny to me because you can go and see a friend on like Facebook and they haven't posted for three months one minute they're talking about, oh, I'm so happy I'm in a relationship. Then three months, it's like, oh, it's silent. And the next minute, it's like, bought a house. And you're like, okay, but in those three months, I'm not like trying to like make it mean, but I'm like, what happened that you didn't post? 
you were probably like, you know, at a low. No, but see, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. no, like I haven't put, I haven't been on Facebook in so long. Like, I, I, my, I, I, I know I, I've been sending messages. No, oh, you, <laughs> no, 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 um, like, <laughs> um, I know I'll get like a, a, like angry text from like, you know, someone that's like, hello, you know, given you're ignoring me, are you okay? And like, no, I don't, don't reach out to me via Facebook. That's like not the right way to get a hold of me. Yeah. But, um, well, I don't remember what I was saying, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think getting back into life is a really good thing. Yeah. And I think if we can, if we can figure out a way to use social media as a, you know, as a tool that it is and use it for good, great. And then I think we need to all get back into our lives because we're missing it. Yeah. Scrolling. I'm missing it. I waste so much time on scrolling through shit that I doesn't matter, yeah. you know? And, and that, and I, and like, I am an, an overachiever and I hate myself when I don't get things done. So like, I'm starting from a, a spot of trying to not, not scroll mindlessly yeah. um, and be more conscious of it. So I, I think that we are in a, in a, I, I, I actually think it's scary that, that, that we're in a generation of, of kids that are, that are addicted to it. We're just, we're just going to call them scrollers. <laughs> yeah. Everybody but, scrolls. That'll be yeah. the next one. That's going to do it for this episode of Tobin Tonight. Our thanks to Serena Vincent for coming on to the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying thank you for listening and good night.